Good afternoon and welcome to this TSU Sports Signing Day update. I'm joined by Texas Southern head coach Michael Haywood as we get set to recap his second signing day class. Coach Haywood, thank you for taking some time to join us. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Coach, if you could talk a little bit about your signing day class and some thoughts of some of the student athletes you'll be bringing in. Well, I think it's important that uh, the alumni and the student body realizes that we went out and got some multiple quarterbacks. I uh, signed two quarterbacks, one from Newport News, Virginia, who's at Fort Scott, uh, who's here now as a mid-semester guy. And we also signed uh, a freshman by the name of Austin Sessoms uh, from Tampa Bay Catholic High School. So we went out and fulfilled that need. Um, the needs that we had a defensive line, uh, we fulfilled those needs with a couple of defensive ends and three defensive tackles. And so uh, we graduated a lot of players last year. We graduated 28 players. A lot of those guys were linebackers. And so we signed a really good core of linebackers that are coming in here to play. Coach, when you look at your class, what were some of the areas that you wanted to come in and address? Well, we wanted to get more speed at the tailback position. Uh, I think that we fulfilled that with Terry O'Brown, who's one of the fastest guys in the Houston area. He's one of the top 100 players in the Houston area. We fulfilled that. Uh, we wanted to get uh, a hammer at fullback with Braley out of Pittsburgh, uh, Texas, and who's a big physical fullback at about 235 pounds, 245 pounds, somewhere up in there. At one point, he was 260. And getting a hammer. And then the defensive line, as we talked about. And then uh, we're going to be putting a couple more guys on scholarship also. Coach, when you look at signing day and what it's become now with the players announcing the selections, as a head coach, how nerve-wracking is it for you guys on this day? Well, the thing that you can do is only do the best job you can and develop relationships uh, with the family members, develop relationships with the young student athletes, uh, the, people that, the people that surround them, maybe the high school coach, uh, the champion guys, uh, female or male who's in there giving them guidance, maybe their girlfriend who's helping them make the decision. And that's the best thing that you can do is put yourself in a position to be successful that way. And in the end, you know, you have to believe that their word is good. And fortunate enough, um, we have 22 guys to sign today. And for my last weekend that we were here, you know, uh, I think that the coaches did a tremendous job in signing these 22 players. Now, Coach Haywood, I was fortunate enough to be with you on the day that you accepted the job to be the head coach here at Texas Southern. And I remember one of the things that stuck out to me that you said at that press conference was that you guys were going to recruit the state of Texas heavily. You're bringing in 20 guys from the state of Texas. Talk a little bit about the state of college, or excuse me, high school football in Texas. Well, Texas football, is, as I've always said, is the best in the country. And um, I've been a lot of different places. It's been my 10th stop. And everybody, when I'm sitting in the staff room, when I said, oh, Texas football is the best football in the country, they all look at me because they come back and say, well, we got more players by, per capita in Louisiana and the NFL. I say, well, that may be true. But as Mac Brown stated on the television today, there's 385 Division One football players. And they have to have somewhere to go. And so we were fortunate enough to get 20 of those guys this year with outstanding, some big, fast, and physical. Uh, some a little bit undersized, but extremely fast. And you know, we went out and fulfilled our needs, you know, the necessities in which we had to have. And we're really happy about the young people, uh, the young student athletes we have coming into play. Coach, when you look at the class, you've got a lot of depth you seem to be adding on the defensive ball side of the ball. I did see quite a few linebackers that you had. Talk a little bit about what you guys were trying to do defensively with this class. Well, defensively, when we looked at – the first thing that we do is that we evaluate the guys that are coming back. And we set a depth chart up with the guys that are coming back. Once that depth chart is set, then we go out and we set what our needs are going to be and how we're going to have to fulfill this. What type of uh, football player is going to fit well within that puzzle? Because we put together a puzzle is what we're eventually doing. And some guys are a little bit more different than we've had here in the past. Uh, uh, you look at Munoz, Munoz is a big old guy, he's 6'2", 235, 240, coming in to play middle linebacker. So we weren't able to stop the run versus HBU. We didn't stop the run versus Jackson State. Now we're going out to get bigger and more physical football players that we're able to stop the run. And they said, well, what if they start to pass the ball? Well, we've gone out and recruited some safeties and DBs uh, at cornerback that we can now play man coverage with because of the speed in which they had. Stevenson's coming out of North Shore High School, and he said he's faster than Zafir Murphy. 
I'm waiting on that day to put them on the line. We'll see who the fastest is. But the bottom line is those guys have tremendous speed. And it provides us an opportunity now that we can match up in the slot. We can put the appropriate positions on the field and match up with if we need to go nickel, if we need to go dime, or if we need to go regular personnel to match up against a team that's trying to pound us like HBU did and Jackson State did. Coach, taking a turn to a little bit of the lighter side of signing day and just the overall recruitment process, I heard you tell the story earlier about the amount of weight you guys oh. gained throughout this period because you're having to go to multiple households, everybody's feeding you. Talk a little bit about that process. Well, I finished my physical at the end of the year. It took me a whole six months to get a physical done, and that was due to me. And with that being said is that, you know, one of the things I said, hey, you need to lose weight. I said, you're right on, so I'm going to lose some weight. So I started losing weight over the holidays and lost 12 pounds. I coached Coach Eyes up. I said, you know what? I'm down 12 pounds. I'm eating right, eating more salad, eating more uh, vegetables and protein. I said, this is not too bad either. It's pretty good, good food. After the first week of being out on the road, I called Coach Eyes back. I said, oh, my God, my pants now fit the way they used to fit. I said, this is killing me. I said, we're going into homes. I said, I was in five homes today. I had five meals to eat. I said, but you know what? I thank the families for all those meals because we had gumbo, uh, we had barbecue, we had smothered pork chops, we had a little bit of everything. All right, and Spanish lasagna, pound cake. I'm like, oh. So I thank all the families for the tremendous meals in which they found us, but them 12 pounds came back in a hurry. <laughs> now, Coach, that was gonna be my next question. What is the weirdest meal that you have ever eaten oh. at a recruit's house? My second year as the head coach of Miami University, I go into a home in Lake Charles, Louisiana with the head coach of McNeese, Lance Gidry. And we go out there, we drive up, and everybody's out there outdoors cooking, and we stand around, you know, frying this, frying that. We're out there having a good time, socializing, drinking a little Kool-Aid. We go inside, homemade chips, homemade salsa. We sit down, you know, watching the game that's on television, socializing. Everything's going good. And then they say, Coach, here comes the main meal. I said, all right. They come in. I'm sitting there with a the TV tray. They set a plate. It was a platter of rice and gravy and a full squirrel on my plate. I look at Les Kittry. I've never eaten squirrel. I look at Lance Kendry, and I then say the prayer. I ate that complete plate. I ate the rice, the gravy, the cornbread, that full squirrel. There wasn't left anything left on that squirrel after he looked me in the face to start our <laughs> meal. I say, now this is one for the record books. But whatever it takes to get a player, I'm in. How was it, though? I don't remember. <laughs> I was, just, you ate I was trying to eat that squirrel <laughs> as fast as I get that squirrel down. Right. Oh, but that night it was delicious. It was delicious. I haven't had squirrel since then, though. There you go. No, I, I prefer them some other pork chops I had in San Antonio. Uh, but had some good food. I got you. Coach, before we let you get out of here, today was also a big day because the Tigers revealed their 2017 football schedule. Talk a little bit about your upcoming slate of games. Oh, I think it's an awesome opportunity for us to go uh, play FAMU uh, in Tallahassee, Florida on August 26th. Uh, open it up against Alex Wood, who was with us at Miami University as our receiver coach, who I think is an outstanding man, but yet a great football player. But it's an opportunity for us to go and get the cartwheels dusted off in our first game before we come back and play Prairie View, which is such a pivotal game in our season so that we can improve anywhere from 10 to 25% as we go into that game as a team. And so we're looking forward to it. We got HBU following that. What a great opportunity to play HBU. They do a tremendous job over there. Saw the guys out on the road recruiting, doing a tremendous job out on the road recruiting. We really appreciate, we really enjoy, uh, you know, battling with them on a few guys. But, you know, that kicks off our season, then we have an open week. But I tell you this, then we're gonna go to Kennesaw State and. Uh, you know, they're an option football team. And so totally different football team in which we have to prepare for. And then we have Alcorn also that's uh, a non-league game this year. But we're looking forward to it. And then you have your Grambling, your Southern, who 
they're going to be ranked at the top of the league, and they, they, it is well deserved. They're a good football team, did a tremendous job last year, and those are the goals in which we have to uh, raise our level of competition up to. We have to be better than they are in the day in which we play them. Coach, we know you're a busy man. We appreciate you taking some time out to join us today, and good luck. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. This is Andrew Roberts, Coach Michael Haywood, joining you for this TSU Sports update as we recap the 2017 National Signing Day class for the Tigers.